Hello, and welcome to your new staff account. In this video, we're going to do an overview of all of the various actions and features you can utilize using your staff account. If your admins created a password for you, you can navigate to the business's website and click the login or sign up link at the top of the page. From here, enter in your email address, a password, and then click the sign in button. If the admin invited you to create your own password, open up your inbox and locate the welcome to company name email. From here, click on the set up new password button to navigate to the web page. Enter your password into the boxes and then click the set new password button. Once you log in, you'll be directed to your staff dashboard. Your staff account may look different than this one as each account can be customized according to the admin's preference for permissions and access. For example, there could be sections on the side menu that are completely missing or view only, meaning you can't make any adjustments or edits. For the sake of this video, we're going to explore a staff account that has all of the permissions enabled. Your account has a left side menu that allows you to access different sections in the dashboard. If you click the topmost item, Dashboard, you can view jobs for upcoming bookings in several different views. The first view is Calendar View, which is the default for this account. Calendar View will look at the job schedule according to the date view, the week view, or the month view. If you're in week or day view, you also have two additional options. The sidebar view allows you to look at a list of your providers or workers on the side of the screen and check up boxes to filter jobs for each provider. If you switch to the vertical view, you'll see each provider's name listed in a column and then any jobs that have been assigned will be listed below. Finally, there's a horizontal view which is basically an inversion of the vertical view. This uses rows instead to show various times and the providers located on the right side of the screen. In addition to the calendar view, there's also a listing view, which places all upcoming bookings in a list with the service date, customer and basic customer information, which provider or team is assigned to the booking, the location of the booking, and the price the customer is paying. There are several action buttons along the side, the first of which will show you a preview of some of the job's basic details. If you'd like to send a message, you can click the second icon here. To edit the booking or make changes or reschedule, you can click the pencil icon. And to cancel the booking, you can click the trash can icon. The last view in your dashboard is the map view. First, you'll select a time range to see which jobs you'd like placed on the map. Once you click apply, points will be dropped for each booking location. You can navigate between different types of views by using the icons on the upper right section of the screen. In both calendar view and map view, you can click on a booking to reveal a sidebar that shows additional details as well as options to take for that booking. Bookings can also be organized into different time frames or sections under the Bookings menu. You can click on Today's Bookings to view a list of only today's services that have been scheduled, upcoming bookings to look at jobs that are coming up in the future, and assigned bookings, which are bookings that have not been assigned to any provider or worker just yet, as well as the job history, which shows all jobs that are in the past and have been completed. In addition, there's also a section to show all canceled bookings, a section for charging bookings, a section that holds all of the drafts and quotes you've sent to customers, as well as booking time logs if you have your providers track time and distance for your jobs. If providers take photos and upload them into the app, there's also a job pictures section here so you can view the photos they've uploaded. Finally, there's a download CSV option at the very bottom if you'd like to download any of this information to use for reports. The next item on the menu is the leads section. This allows you to add new leads and view all current leads based on the form that you've set up. To add a new lead, you would just click add new lead and then fill out the questions that the, you or the admin have set up. Once you're finished entering the details, click the blue submit button 
and that lead will be sorted into the All Leads folder. There's also a customer section, which allows you to add new customers, view a list of all existing customers, or view deactivated customers, and respond to deactivation requests. Similarly, there is a provider tab as well, which allows you to add new providers or workers for the business, view all existing provider profiles, send payments to the providers, look at logs of previously sent payments, as well as the deactivation section, the manage availability section, and schedule request section. If you're a recruiter, you may also have access to the hiring section. This module is separate from the staff dashboard and includes additional sections like funnels, an interview section, quizzes, and other items to help sort and test your candidates. There is also a marketing section which contains a couple of different options such as coupons, campaigns, daily discounts, which offer discounts based on the date and time booked by customers, gift cards, ratings to view all job ratings and comments, and a blog section. If you have permission to view reports, you can click on the reports option in the side menu, and that will take you to a screen where you can see various types of reports and filter them based on date, industry, location, or time frame. The log section contains two different subsections, system logs, which allows you to see all of the various actions taking place in the system. And then there's also email logs. This shows all of the various emails that have been sent out to customers, staff members, providers, and the admin. Finally, you may have access to the settings section, which allows you to make changes to the store information, make changes to taxes and email lists, use translation services, make changes to the design of the forms or website, and make actual modifications to the industries, including the booking form and the pricing that is offered. There's also a staff section where you can add new staff members and view current staff members or change staff member permissions, booking spots, which affects which options your customers have to pick from when a spot is available, and notifications. Notification section is further broken down into general settings, master templates, which can be applied based on the type of email being sent, email section, SMS, app notifications, and system alerts, which pop up inside the dashboard itself. Next, we'll use the staff dashboard to perform some basic functions. One of the most important things is probably the ability to add a new booking. If the business has different industries, there will be a sub-menu which allows you to pick which industry you are going to create a booking for. Once you click an option, this will bring you into the booking details page. You can also navigate between different industries by clicking the tabs on the top of the page. If your admins created multiple types of forms, you can use the question at the top to change between different types of pricing. Next, you'll fill out the booking form based on whatever the admin has created. This often includes a place to check location, basic customer details, selecting frequencies, and entering custom information about the job. On the side menu, you'll see a summary of all options selected, as well as a payment summary, including sales tax, if applicable to your location, to tell the customer what the pricing will be. At the very bottom of the page, there will be a section for payment information. Here you can add a new credit card if your admin has connected a payment processor, or you can mark a booking as cash check to indicate that payment will be collected outside of Booking Koala. Once you're finished, you can check the booking, confirm all of the information is correct, and then click the green Save Booking button. You can also click the blue Save as Draft button if you'd like to save this as a draft, but not actually schedule the booking. If you save it as a quote, this will allow you the option to send a quote email to the customer containing all of the options you've just selected on the form. 
Another important function of the dashboard is the ability to reschedule or cancel bookings. To do this, you can go to the dashboard or any of the booking sections to select a booking. To make changes, you can click on the booking, select the edit icon, or click the edit button within calendar view. Once you're inside the booking, you can make any changes you desire to the pricing or select new services. If you need to reschedule the booking, scroll down to the assigned to section and then click the blue reschedule button. If the booking is part of a recurring series, you can select whether you want to reschedule all future appointments, including this one, or just the booking you're on currently. You'll also have additional options on how to select a new provider or team if necessary. Check the box next to the same provider to view availability for the original provider assigned to the job. You can click the checkbox next to specific provider or team to search for a provider or team that you can assign. If the customer has booked services previously, you can check the previous provider and team box to view which providers have been assigned previously. And finally, if you don't want to assign any provider at all, you can check the option next to the waiting list. This will place the job into the unassigned folder, which means that no providers are currently assigned to it. Depending on your admin settings, providers may be able to see and even pick up bookings from this section. The admin may also give you permission to use the manual scheduling option, which means that you can select a date, enter a custom time, create an arrival window if necessary, and then assign a provider. To assign an available provider, you'll be directed to the Available tab, where you can view a list of all providers and teams. If you want to view a list of providers who are not available for the job, you'll click the Not Available tab at the top of the page. If you click the Check Compatibility tab, this will tell you which providers are unable to take the job due to their schedule or their settings. You can find out the reasons why by clicking the gray Check Reasons Why button. Once you've made a choice, click the green Assign button to add that provider to the booking. You may also have the ability to pair providers, which allows you to create temporary teams of two or more providers to assign to a booking. Check the box next to the provider you'd like to pair, and then click the green Pair button at the top of the pop-up. You can remove providers from a booking by clicking the red X, or clicking the Remove Provider button. Once you're ready to save changes, scroll up and click the blue Update Booking button. If you need to cancel the booking instead, you can click the red Cancel button. There are a few additional options, such as resending an invoice to the customer, viewing a log of all of the activity for the specific service, copying the booking to make a new service for a future date, managing the different recurring items if this is a recurring service, and looking at the job on a map. If your providers take pictures or you have the ability to upload job pictures, you'll use the last option here. If you're ever looking to resume a canceled booking, you can go to the bookings menu and then select cancellations. From here, you can click on the edit symbol and then scroll down to the provider section and click the reschedule button. From here, you can use the various options to select a new provider and then click Resume Booking to resume the booking for a future schedule. Whenever you book a new customer by creating a booking, that customer will have a profile automatically created. You can view all of the customer profiles by going to the Customer section and clicking on Customers. Here, you can search for the customer by their name, email, phone number, or address. To view the customer's profile, click on the name. 
This will show you the calendar view or listing view of all of the bookings that are coming up for this particular customer. There's also a profile section where you can change their basic information, add notes, or change their password or resend a welcome email if they did not get it. There's a section to add multiple addresses, as well as a section to add new billing information or delete existing billing information. If the customer has a gift card, you can view that gift card's information as well as balance and any gift cards that have been sent out by the customer. If the business uses a referral program, the referral section will track all of the credits that the customer has earned by sharing their special link. Customers may also have a My Drive section, which allows you or them, depending on the permissions, to upload files to share. You can manage notifications for a specific customer profile using the Notifications tab. And lastly, you can use the Settings options to add additional notes and stop sending a review links or receiving referral credits. Provider accounts, or the accounts for the workers who go out and do the jobs, are very similar to the customer account. To view all of your providers, select Providers and then click on Providers again. To view the provider's dashboard, click on the provider's name. From here, you can view a listing of all of their upcoming jobs and bookings, make changes in their profile, view their schedule and availability, as well as make modifications to their settings such as what types of jobs they can receive, if they can work with Teams, and more. If you use the software to send out payments to your providers, the Payments section will show you all of the various payments that have been sent. Providers also have a notification section, so you can customize the types of notifications the provider will receive via email, SMS, or on the app. If you work in hiring, you can use the Payment Processor tab to link a payment account to send out provider payments. Providers also have a My Drive, which allows you and or the provider to send and share files. Finally, providers will have a Reviews tab, which shows all of the various bookings that have been graded as well as any feedback that's been shared. Some businesses may allow the provider to submit changes to their schedule or their set teams. You can view these and accept or deny the requests by going on to the Manage Availability tab or the Schedule Request tab. Under the Marketing section, you may have permission to create coupons or at least view coupons in the various settings, work on campaigns like sending out mass emails to customers, setting up discounts, or working with gift cards. You can view a list of all active gift cards by clicking on the gift cards link or click send gift card to send a gift card to a new customer. Once a booking is complete in the system, you can go to the booking section and then click on booking time logs to view the time logs for each booking. This section also allows you to approve or reject booking time logs when your bookings have pricing based on time. When you're ready to charge the booking, you can go to the Booking Charges page, where you'll see a listing of all of the pending charges below. Once bookings have been charged, you can view them in the All Charges section. If your company uses card holds, you can view a list of all payments being held or declined card holds within this section. As mentioned earlier, the various sections of the dashboard that you're allowed to see are based on the permissions granted by the admin. Once you're ready to log out of your account, click on your name in the top right menu item and then select the logout option. If you ever have any questions about how to use the software and its various sections, you can also click the Help Center link to view various articles and videos on what you can use the software for. Just search a term or question in the top part or browse the various categories to see different articles and videos on each aspect of the software. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy using your new staff account.